So the, again, the question comes to our mind that um, those who surrender to God and those who, uh, what you call, those who follow this path, they attain moksha. And um, then is it that God is partial, that he gives moksha to someone and doesn't give moksha to others? Is Bhagwan says no. That whoever comes to me with whatever intention, I give them to them. It's a very famous and a beautiful verse now. It says, Ye yatha maam prapadyante Tanstathaiva bhajamyaham Mama vartmanu vartante Manusha partha sarvashaha Ye yatha maam prapadyante Tanstathaiva bhajamyaham Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manusha Partha Sarvasha Haan. Bhagavan says, those who approach me, those people who approach me with whatever desire, with whatever intention, with whatever way they approach me, I also approach them in the same way. I also fulfill their desire in the same way. And that is the great secret of this world. That whatever we desire and whatever intention we have with which we move in this world, those things get fulfilled in appropriate time. That is how it is. If we desire moksha, we will get moksha. But very few people desire moksha. Generally, we desire other things. So Bhagavan says, he who, whoever approaches me in whatever way. Suppose a person is uh, approaching for wealth, then I give them wealth. Somebody wants some position, name, fame, then I give them. If somebody has got a desire to know jidnyasa, then I fulfill their desire by giving them knowledge. So in seven chapter also when we study, we will, Bhagwan will explain that there are four types of people who approach me. One is those who are in some difficulty, sorrow, pain, misery, they approach God. If you stand outside some temple and all, you will find four types of people. Hmm. So those who have trouble, when trouble is gone, they should stop going to the temples. So when there is trouble, physical, emotional, social, economical, this, that, huh, that's called art. I am in difficulty, I am in pain, I am in sorrow. Oh God, please help me, save me. And they have their own understanding about God. Not as one with me, but as someone powerful, someone strong, someone most uh, compassionate, someone who will you know, listen to me. So their concept of God, each, everyone's concept of God may be different. And with that they approach. Maybe they may think that, oh, going to this temple, I will be able to communicate to God. Then they go there. Or some may feel that, no, just staying at home, I can communicate with God. They stay at home. Wherever you go, with whatever attitude, Bhagwan approaches them in that way. Because he is everywhere. It's like you want to see space. Oh, forget about space. If you want to see the sun rise, where should you go? Many people go to Kanyakumari. <laughs> As though there is no sunrise happening in Delhi. Wherever you stay, you can see the sunrise. Maybe not as beautiful as at some places, but we can see. It is everywhere. But if we have that notion that, no, no, I will go there only and see the sunrise, and then go there and see the sunrise. But even if you go there, you will see the sunrise. And even if you stay here and expect sunrise, you will see it. So God is like that, all pervading, and can be approached in various ways. 
Therefore, there are multiple religions in this world. And all of them claim that, yes, ours is the best and proper, and we have, we have all our desires have been fulfilled through this. So if a person is in misery, he approaches God for relieving him or her from all their miseries, and God does it. There are those who approach him to gain something in return, wealth, position, name, fame, that they are called artharthi bhakta. God fulfills their desires also. Depending on their karma, depending on the situation, he fulfills. He has got his own system of fulfilling. Hmm. Then there are those who approach God to know. They have intense jidnyasa, thirst to know. They want to know who am I, what is this world. But they, by themselves they don't inquire, but they approach God in their own way. They surrender to him and pray to him that please reveal your nature to us. And Bhagavan says, I give them knowledge. Dadami buddhi yogam tam. In 10th chapter, Bhagavan says, I give them knowledge. And there are those who approach God with, with knowing that he is one with me. They approach him in the state of meditation and come to experience oneness with him. So, ye yatham am prapadyante tans tathaiva bhajami aham. Mahatma sometimes they say it in a more beautiful way that if you take one step towards God, he takes ten steps towards you. And his steps are long. Hmm. Ten steps, in fact, one step of God itself is enough. Ten steps are not required. If we approach him with emotion, he also responds to us with emotion. If we approach him with intellectual vigor and all, he also fulfills it accordingly. So that is the beauty. It's like a mirror. Whatever face we show to the mirror, the mirror shows the same face to us. You can try it out. I have tried. <laughs> so God is like that. Whatever way we approach him, he comes to us in the same way. If we have any desire in our mind and approach, in the right time, in the right way, he fulfills that desire. If not in this lifetime, in the next lifetime. In Ramayana, there is a story of um, Vibhishan approaching Lord uh, Ram Chandraji. And as soon as he came, Bhagwan gave him the kingdom of Lanka. Before even winning that kingdom, he said, you are the king now. But he said, I don't want the kingdom. He says, no. You had that desire in your mind. When he was kicked by Ravan and all, some desire came into his mind that if only I had this kingdom, it would have been a different matter altogether. I would have ruled the kingdom in a different way. And see, look at my brother, the way he is dealing with the whole situation. So that desire had come to his mind. And Bhagavan says, if any desire is there in my devotee's mind, I fulfill those desires. So, mama vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvashaha he partha he arjuna all beings, all human beings, manushya, all human beings, they are following my path alone. Some of them are coming to me directly and many are coming to me indirectly. But all of them, in whatever way, in whatever sadhana they are doing, whichever gods they are worshipping, Whatever uh, upasana they are doing, they are ultimately coming to me. And this is the beautiful approach and understanding which we have. And therefore, in our culture, we have this what we call tolerance, acceptance of all gods. Some few more gods doesn't disturb us because already 33 crores are there. So new god or new ideas or new methods of worship doesn't disturb doesn't change our philosophy, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't change our understanding of God, because He is in all ways. So, ye, mama vartmanu vartante, all people, all human beings are following my path. 
Of course, those who are following this path of karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, and all, they are directly on that main road. But others are also, they are also coming to me. There is a famous beautiful shloka which says that akashat patitam toyam yathagachati sagaram sarvadeva namaskaram keshavam pratigachati. That just as the water when it falls from the sky, it ultimately goes to the ocean. Some go directly, but some, many go, many water particles, they go indirectly. Some of them fall in the river, some go into the, what you call the underground, in various ways, but ultimately all water has to reach the ocean, because that is our source, that is the source of the water. Similarly, all people are approaching God. Even Nastik, those who don't believe in God, they say that, oh, I don't believe in God. They are also approaching God only. They also desire peace. They also desire happiness. They also desire satisfaction. So these are nothing but qualities of God only. So Mama Vartmanu Vartante, Manusha, Partha Sarvashaha, all of them are approaching me. So just we have to pray, we have to just follow this path and we will be able to attain that supreme goal. If it is so simple, if it is uh, that we can approach and we will get what we want, if we want moksha, we will get moksha, then how come all people don't follow this path? What is the problem? That problem is being revealed now in the next verse. See, the whole Bhagavad Gita is a very systematic presentation. So each verse is connected to the other verse in a, in a logical sequence. We have to understand that sequence. Then the whole thing will become more clear to us. So why all people don't follow this path? I mean, follow uh, the path which will lead them to moksha directly, freedom from all sorrow, all pain. What is the problem? Bhagavan says in the next verse, Kaṅśantak karmanāṁ siddhim Yajanta iha devatāh Kshipram himānuṣe loke Siddhir bhavati karma jā Kaṅśantak karmanāṁ siddhim yajanta iha devatāh kṣipraṁ himānuṣe loke siddhir bhavati karma ja. Haan, Bhagavan says, most of the people, they desire the results of action. Moksha is the result of knowledge. But many of us, we desire results of action, means de desire things of this world which can be measured, which can be quantified, which is different from us, which gives us temporary happiness and peace, those things alone comes in our mind. They are the only desire which comes to our mind. Though deeply we want complete happiness, but we strive to gain those things which give us limited happiness. It's a, it's a contradiction. It's a strange paradox like. Deeply we want peace, but we, uh, complete peace, but we are striving to gain temporary peace. Deeply want we, we want happiness, total happiness, but we strive to gain temporary happiness through action and the results of action. So, kaṅśantam karmanam siddhim yajanta iha devataha. So, desiring the little, little results of action, Bhagavan says, in this world, people generally worship the little gods. Devataha means the little gods. God only, his powers is, is there in this world in various ways. There are multiple jivas are there. No, we are also jivas. The animal, birds, plants are also jivas. 
and there are higher jivas also 